Hey guys, I want to show you guys how to build a bunch of different types of eyes and visualize them in a way that helps you draw them from a bunch of different types of angles and not just how to draw one specific eye. So first off, let's kind of go over the anatomy of the eye. So the way I think of an eye is you have your top water line, your bottom water line, your top eyelid, your bottom eyelid, this little corner piece, little pink thing, the, like, I don't, I don't know what it's called. The eye aglet. <laughs> that's a, that's a really bad name for that, but I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. The eyelashes, the iris, and the pupil. And the eyebrows, because I think eyebrows should legally be considered part of the eye. So pretty much everybody is familiar with all of the parts of the eye, like the white of the eye and the iris and the pupil and the eyelids. I would hope that you know what eyelids are unless you are a lizard person, in which case, please, please be my friend, please. But anyway, not many people are familiar with the waterline unless you watch a lot of makeup tutorials. Now the waterline is this little shelf that sits here in between the actual eye and your eyelash line. And it is prime real estate for emo children to put eyeliner. And I've gotten a lot of eyeliner in my eyeballs because of putting it right there. But anyway, your eyelashes go right here on this line. And then the water line is what holds like your tears and stuff and kind of seals up your eye when you close it. There's also a water line on the top. You usually don't see it quite as much as the bottom. But from some angles, you do see it. I'll put it in there. Especially if the eyes are like super wide open, like super surprised. Now here I've drawn the iris a little bit obscured by the top eyelid and not touching the bottom. Realistically, you're gonna have about a third of the iris that's obscured by the top eyelid when your face is just like in a resting expression. And then almost always the bottom part of the iris is going to be touching your bottom waterline. I don't do that because of a stylistic preference. I tend to make my irises a little bit smaller to be a little bit more cartoony, but I think it's important to understand uh, how realistic eyes work before you start to cartoonize them. Know the rules before you break them. You especially want the bottom waterline to touch your eye if your character is smiling. Because if you have space here and they're smiling, it's gonna look like they're doing one of those fake smiles where they're like Chrissy Teigen. So the cheek muscle, when you smile, it's gonna push up on the eyelid. And that part will move up. This part of the eye will also move up when your eye is looking in different directions. So if you're looking up, the bottom eyelid's gonna try to follow it. Other than that, it doesn't move a whole lot. Now, the top eyelid, the apex, or the very top of the curve, is about where the iris is, because the iris is actually raised a little bit further than the whites of your eyes, which is very freaky to think about. But that means when you look in different directions, your eyelid will curve around it. For example, let's do some little shapes here. If this eye is looking this direction, then the eye will curve around this way. If it's looking this direction, it's gonna curve the other way. Anyway, make the irises bigger or smaller, whatever you want, whatever you think looks good. But a pretty good rule of thumb is unless you want a character to look very surprised or even like a little bit scary, you want the top part of the eye to at least be touching the top waterline. Oh, and how, how can I forget the most important part of any eye is the, the eye bags. And I love eye bags because there are so many variations of what they can look like. Look at your friends, look at your family members, look at yourself, see how your eye bags differ. I think it can add a lot of very fun diversity to character designs. And also tired is just a good look for characters. I'm sorry, it's just fun to draw. Maybe I just think that because I look tired. I think this thing is actually a tear duct. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. But in any case, you don't see it in everybody. Sometimes the, sometimes this part of the eye folds over this part and you're not gonna see that portion at all. As far as the actual eyelids go, you can have a lot of variation there too. I've just got a simple line going right here, but if you wanted a character or person to look really sultry, 
or maybe even tired, you can give them like a really tall, very deep eyelid to give you plenty of space for eyeshadow and what have you. And you can also make it fold over the eye so that the fold of it is barely visible at all, like this. A lot of people have skin that folds over the eyelid or the eyelids are in different configurations like um, hooded eyes or monolids. So I've actually compiled a very, very small selection of the kinds of different shapes that eyelids can take. And I did a little simplified sketch version underneath all of them, just to show you that there are so many different shapes and variations of what eyelids can do and how it can give each character a very unique little spin. And also kind of to show that if you want to draw a character with a monolid or double lid or hooded eyes, that there's more than one way to do it. See, this person's fold is at the inner corner of their eye. Um, this person just has a fold over the very top of the curve of their eye. With this person, there's just a gentle crease right here. And I also, I really like this guy's look because of his bottom eye bag. I, it's just a good look. I just tried pointing at the screen to show you what I'm doing. I'm very tired. <laughs> now, when you're building an eye, I like to use very simple shapes to create eyes. So let's say I wanted like kind of a square one. Let's do sort of a complex shape on the upper eyelid and then a simpler one on the bottom. Or maybe I want to do a simple shape on the top and then do a more complex one on the bottom. And then start building in the anatomy around it. It's not a hard rule, but I generally try to make one line complex with like more than one curve or angle and then the other one very simple. And that's a good tip for any design in general. Make sure there's a, a part that's very interesting and then a part that's a little less interesting to give the interesting part more room to be noticed. Does that make sense? Does anything I'm saying make sense? <laughs> anyway, I've drawn a whole bunch of different eyes here to give you an idea of all the different thing things that you can do. Obviously there's millions and millions, just, you know, infinite different configurations that you can do. These are just like 15 that I doodled up in a very short amount of time. Having different eyes is like the first step into giving your characters unique features that make them recognizable from each other. I mean, shoot, you can even have variation in like the kind of eyelashes that you have. Eyelashes can point up, they can even point down. Um, they can be curly or straight. Maybe they just have bottom eyelashes and up top, maybe vice versa. The possibilities, they're endless. Another note on eyelashes. Um, eyelashes do not all face one direction. They actually follow the curvature of the eyeball. So the one that's facing you is going to be pretty straight. And then they fan out from there like that. So they go out in all different directions. It gets a little tiny bit different when you're viewing the eye from different angles, but that's the general rule. Speaking of drawing the eye from different angles, let's figure out how to place the eye on the head. So here I've made a bunch of dummies so we can start placing our eye on. So let's draw some little lines right here. They line up about at the corners of the mouth, which is about where you want the middle of your eye to be. So this line here is just, I drew a circle and then I found the middle of the circle and then I curved this line up to follow the way the person is looking, imagining their head like kind of a globe shape almost. I did the same exact thing for this shape, except I just curved it the opposite direction. So you're gonna take this line and the bottom eyelid is going to basically follow that line. And then you're going to see a lot more of the top eyelid and you'll see a lot of the top waterline from this angle. And then you'll get a lot of eyelash action. And you might see a tiny, tiny bit of the eye bags, but not that much. And you might see a tiny bit of the eyelid, but not that much. But what you are gonna see a lot of is the space in between the eyebrow and the eye. That part is going to be very much elongated. So it looks like our eyebrows are up super high. There we go. And then you'll also want to 
draw the eyes as ovals because they're being foreshortened as well. Perfect. And then for the opposite angle, we're going to do a lot of the opposite stuff. So the top eyelid is going to be the one that follows the curvature of the face. And then you'll see a lot of the bottom eyelid and the bottom waterline. And you might see a little bit of the top eyelid here. But just like there's a lot of space here, there's going to be almost no space here. And depending on how dramatic the angle is, your eyebrow might even overlap the eye a little bit. And if you're worried about the character looking angry from this angle, you can tilt the eyebrows a little bit. And then your top eyelashes are also going to kind of come out over top of the eye. I'm gonna leave those out so that you can actually see what I've done, but your eyelashes are going to obscure a lot of the eye from this angle. From uh, the angle looking up, you probably won't see much of the eyelashes at all. If you make them pointing up like this, it usually looks really unnatural, so I usually just do the tiniest hint of them or leave them out completely. All right, now we've pretty much gone over how to draw the eyes from straight on. Um, when you draw the eyes, they're placed about one eye width apart. So if we have these two guys here, we wanna make sure there's room for one more right in between. Again, not a hard rule. That's just um, kind of the, the rule for realism that they give you like in anatomy drawing class. If everyone's measurements were exactly the same, then we would all have the exact same faces. So obviously you have a little bit of leeway. Just learn the rules before you break them. And then in between the corner of the eye and the edge of the face, I like to have about a half of an eye width right there. A three quarters angle, I think is one of the hardest ways to draw eyes. Um, so we're gonna do our best. Um, these guidelines can be kind of helpful if you put them in the right spot. Just um, try to move them along with the center symmetry line. Now this eye is going to be foreshortened a little bit, so it's gonna be a little bit less wide than if we were just looking at it straight on. And the curve of it is going to lean a little bit more toward whatever direction the character is looking. Nice. And then this other eye over here is extremely tricky because over here is where we're going to start to see the eyelid wrap around the, the edge of the eye. So over here is where you're going to see the actual eyeball part and then curve the top eyelid. And you're gonna see that curve around the edge of the eyeball here. See here we have like the, the raw white of the eye is what you're gonna see. Ooh. Raw eyeball is not a phrase that I should use, is it? Anyway, for the eyelids, they're also going to be wrapping around the form. And maybe just a little tiny mark here as an indication that there's another eyelid. I'll put one here too. And then the eyelash will come out from here. So it's gonna have a little bit more of a triangular shape than usual. Now, I think this space is a little bit too short and now you still want about one eye width between them. So I need to move this guy back a little bit. There you go, it looks much better. So there's, there's, about, there's about a good distance right there. For the eyebrows, um, since they are on the brow ridge, they're gonna come out a little bit further than the corner of the eye. But then on this side, it's gonna it's going to start a little bit further to the right of the eye. Once again, to show that it's on a different plane. And then the brow ridge will stick out. The corner of the face will come in to where this, to where your eye is set in. And then comes back out where your cheek meat is. Again, that's kind of a difficult angle to draw. Don't feel bad if you have a hard time with it. It's just really hard. That's just how it is. Profile is also a little bit difficult um, for people to draw. And I know that I said it's usually not helpful to draw the actual eyeball, but I'm going to do it this time to kind of show you how it works. So we're going to start about halfway through the eyeball and make a triangular shape here. Now, if you want it to be 
um, consistent. Now, if you're drawing like a comic or something and you want it to be consistent with the way the character's eyes look, measure how wide, like tall the eye is and make sure to carry that measurement over here. So anyway, your eyelashes are gonna come out a little bit further than the eye. And the eyelids, they have masks, so they'll be, they'll stick out a little bit further than the curve of the eyeball. And we'll have a little fold right here. And then you really want to make a, a very steep kind of oval here. Now, you would think that the pupil would go here because the pupil is in the middle of the iris, right? Wrong. Your pupil is actually set really deep inside of the iris. So it's shaped, if we're looking at it from the side, it's shaped kind of like this. And it's like down here. There are a lot of people on the internet who can explain it a lot better than I can, but the gist of it is that the pupil will be set way back in the eye right here. And you can even have a, a little bit of space right here. But by doing that, it kind of shows that the eye has more depth and it's not just like painted on. So we've got our eye in place, put our little eyelashes here and erase the eyeball part because that's not helpful to us anymore. Figuring out where to place the eye is also a little bit difficult and it's gonna depend a lot on the person you're drawing and how flat or deep set their face is. So more deep set characters, you can move it back a little bit. You, you get a lot of leeway, but I would leave, I wouldn't go any more than an eye width back. So we can imagine one right here and that seems pretty good. And then once again, the eyebrows are on a different plane so they will come forward much further than the eye. Make sure to leave a little bit of space there unless the character has a to brow, which, which is fine. But if it doesn't, if they don't, then don't carry it all the way to the edge. This isn't the most comprehensive tutorial ever, but I wanted to do something a little bit further than just step-by-step -step how to draw one eye. And the next video is going to be how to color and shade these eyes, which I'm hoping will help you visualize them even more in a 3D space. So thank you for watching. And again, if anything was confusing, please let me know. Talk to me in the comments. Um, I'm gonna clean up these sketches and I will see you in the next video.